is Benjamin Okeze Kalo, representing the good people of Bende Federal Constituency. I am from Abia State. Arise. From the hallowed chambers, his voice resonates crystal clear. You say you, you shared money recently, and I represent the constituency, and the, there are 360 of us, and all of them are saying we are not feeling the impact. He is the unmistaking voice of Undi Bende and the image maker of the House of Representatives. Swept away houses and roads in communities like Mpa, Umimeni, Uzita, and Bende. Mr. Speaker, I he's a committed, courageous, articulate, and deeply impassioned lawmaker with the plight of his constituents. Joining me now on the political segment is Honorable Benjamin Kalu, who's the spokesman of the House of Representatives. Ben Kalu's mandate gives you first-hand information on the activities of the member representing the good people of Bende Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives. Honorable Benjamin Kalu, as well as his position on national issues. Ben Kalu's mandate as on Flow 94.9 FM, Vision Africa 104.1 FM, and Real 99.1 FM every Tuesday by 10:30 a.m. Ben Kalu's mandate gains of quality representation. It is the weekly engagement of Representative Benjamin Okezekalu with the good people of Abia State, especially Bende Federal Constituency. And we call it Ben Kalu's Mandate, the second edition of the month of October. Ben Kalu's Mandate is on Flow 94.9 FM, both on the terrestrial platforms and also online, and also on Vision Africa 104.1 FM, Rail 99.1 FM, Abba Family Love 99.9 FM and ABN Online Radio and TV. Bridging the gap between the parliament and the people is Ben Kalu's mandate. My name is Michael Oni, young and vibrant politician who currently is the member representing Bende Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives, occupying the seat of the chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs and doubling as the spokesperson of the House. Our regular guest, Representative Benjamin Okezie Kalu, is joining us virtually this hour. Glad to have you join us and welcome to Ben Kalu's Mandate. Uh, if you can unmute your microphone. Thank you, Michael. Right. For... Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for having me today. And uh, Abians, thank you for tuning in, especially my good people of the Federal Constituency. Always a pleasure to be here. I've not been around for two weeks. And uh, we open up the platform for other people to ventilate ideas that will help them move forward. I'm sure they did on agriculture. Let's uh, discuss governance today. I'm uh, happy to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. Let's begin with the bo budget presentation that was done by Mr. President at the National Assembly tagged Budget of Economic Growth and Sustainability. The President stated that the budget is targeting 17.7 trillion Naira as total federal collectible revenue for 2022, but with plans to finance the budget deficit with 6.26 trillion Naira through borrowing, thereby pushing up the nation's debts. Nigerians are worried of additional financial burden. How these and other projections will cushion the effect of the economy, where people have been growing, uh, groaning rather, under the high cost of food items. I'm sure you will want to share your thoughts on this uh, uh, issue of borrowing and, of course, the borrowing plans in that uh, budget presented by Mr. President. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, um, great. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, the um, presentation of the budget by Mr. President um, has been done, like you rightly pointed out, and many were worried if Mr. President was going to keep to the timeline that will help us um, sustain this um, um, calendar as an institution to run from January to December. And uh, we had assured the public that it would be done end of September or first week, or uh, thereabouts of um, October. We commend Mr. President for uh, living up to expectation, uh, especially with regards to the timing of the presentation. But having said that, yes, the, the worry is the same all around uh, the world, not only in Nigeria, uh, every economy is struggling because of the impact of COVID. Um, it is not unique to Nigeria. Uh, I was going through the 
the list of um, the countries that borrowed uh, funds to sustain their national um, uh, expenditure, and uh, America was ranking the highest. And um, various other countries, Nigeria did not make the first 20 uh, on the list of those who are highly indebted country. And also, I also look at the list of um, most countries that borrowed from China. And Nigeria did not make the list of those who were on the high percentage. Uh, does that justify the fact that we should keep on borrowing? The answer is no. Uh, what Nigerians need to know is that our problem as a parliament is not with the borrowing uh, our only. Our problem is with the borrowing plan. Um, where is this money going into? What is it going to be used on? Will it stimulate the economy or not? And um, if it will stimulate the economy that have been uh, badly impacted on by the COVID, we will allow that. And we will now, through oversight function, monitor the implementation of this fund that Nigerians are crying about. But the truth be told, um, the ones borrowed so far has not been wasted. Uh, I say so because the level of infrastructural development uh, that we have currently in the country um, is, is better than what it used to be. And like I uh, have always highlighted, that my own people that I represent are benefiting currently from um, this money that is being borrowed. Uh, I see that in the amount of roads springing up here and there. Uh, in the federal constituency, the bridge that is going to be built soon and um, 13 schools we have put money in. You see that in the transformers and boreholes springing up here and there. If this money was not borrowed, I can assure you most of these infrastructure, they would not be funded. And if they are not funded, it inhibits the economy. But I would not like to go deep into the budget because it was just presented by the executive, recently presented okay. by the executive. Uh, it is for us now to go to the committee level to begin to do deep diving on the propositions of this particular national budget. It is at that point that will either allow a few things to sell through or to say no to a few things. But I can assure Nigerians, the budget will not leave the National Assembly the way it came. Interesting. One of the achievements of the present and ninth National Assembly is the yearly calendar as regards the budget which you mentioned on this platform. You once mentioned that and uh, it was due to the commitment of the lawmakers. That's fantastic. But beyond the timely passage, how much scrutiny was done? And of course, the question, uh, the question of due diligence comes in here. When we when we work on uh, the budget, we spend two months to work on that piece of document. And by all standards, 360 people working a document presented by the executive for 60 days, broken into various committees to consider the budget performance of the previous year, and also to know their projection for the coming year. I think 60, 60 days is, is, is enough for that job to be done because we do that with some of the experts that we hire to be around us in considering these figures. So we will never sacrifice quality on the altar of speed. Mm. And I can assure you, we're going to repeat a diligent scrutiny of what has been presented to us, just like we did the previous year. But there will be an improvement this year because there are certain factors we will see that must reflect in the budget. And, uh, something like the element of climate change. The budget is capturing it, because these are the challenges of the time. Disability, the project, the budget must capture, you know, people who are disabled in various organizations. We must see something that leads to that. 
so and various other expectations that we have it, it's not going to be just a political analysis of the budget that will be done in line with the provisions of the constitution in section 14 to that had to do with federal character b of that particular section had to do with positioning of projects around the country we're going to look at how universally and dispassionately or uh you know spread that the the the, the budget and the projects represent how 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 are they spread without you know uh, 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 tribal sentiments how are they spread without one particular geopolitical zone receiving more than the others is it balanced is it not balanced we're going to look at that and we're going to see also the items education was it captured to what extent mm. uh, how amount allocated to it to what extent especially with regards to COVID. so the the COVID element and the protocols also how it's been incorporated in the budget and some of those factors yeah, the scarcity of food that you just mentioned during your introduction the cost of food that is high how far has the ministry of agriculture and other related agencies captured the need for us to have food security in the country so, so, so those are some of the things that is going to inform us and the public are allowed to also send in you know some um, inputs to say listen guys like my constituent if you are considering this consider one two three four you should look at one two three four that's the purpose of this program i'm doing they can write to you they can send in feedback and say why considering the budget please prioritize on one two three four and that will inform my opinion and the opinion of all that representatives mm. when we meet to deliberate on the budget all right fantastic more questions will come as uh, the national assembly and the lawmakers uh, of course, uh, start scrutiny of the budget as presented by Mr. President. If you just joined us, it is the weekly engagement of Representative Benjamin Okezekalu with the good people of Abia State, especially his constituency, the Bender Federal Constituency. We call it Ben Kalu's mandate. It comes every week on several radio stations and also radio stations rather, and also ABN Online radio and tv right in abia state younger vibrant politician who currently is a member representing bede federal constituency uh, we've been speaking to him representative benjamin okezie kalu of course uh, he joins us uh, virtually from abuja now let's talk security uh, first it was the upper chambers and barely 24 hours after the senate asked mr president to declare bandits as terrorists the House of Representatives also urged the President to do the same. We would like to get the position of the House of Representatives on this and the implication, especially the constitutionality of such call uh, to the Executive. I wanted to say the question again. It said, uh, repeat it, I didn't hear you at the The point. issue of security. The Senate first urged Mr. President to declare bandits as terrorists. Then, 24 hours later, House of Reps also urged the President to do the same. Right. We want okay. to get the position of the okay. House. Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. You've already answered the position of the House. You said 24 hours later, the House of Reps also raised the same call. So that is the house, position of the House of Reps. Because, you see, uh, when you define terrorism, mm. uh, the question is the actions of the bandits does this fall under the tenets of that definition and the answer is yes so if it falls under the uh, parameters of that definition what is stopping them from being defined as such uh, they are terrorists <laughs> bandits are terrorists they are terrorizing you and i and they should be declared as such so that they the sword of the law was sliced through without looking back. It's, it's very important that we define the crime they are committing with the right garments, with the right robe, with the right label, with the right tag. And uh, the call of the Senate, the call of the House of Representatives are well in order. And uh, I think it is, um, it is long overdue. They, sh they are terrorists and they should be declared as such so that we know how to handle them. Is it going to make any difference in the fight against uh, uh, some of the insecurity issues bedeviling the country, especially from the uh, bandits, uh, of course, uh, kidnapping and also 
committing some other atrocities. Of course, of course, it will make a lot of difference. It will make a lot of difference because they will fall under the law that speaks of terrorism. Mm. The law that has provision on how to handle terrorism. And uh, I can assure you that um, those who are applying these laws, who have more, uh, you know, opportunity, more boldness, more courage to apply the whole full nine years of the law, especially with regards to the uh, punitive measures outlined for terrorist um, operation. And also, it will make the globe, the world, our partners, our allies, to see, uh, you know, uh, the level of terrorism in this country. So that if we're asking for help, they will know that the percentage of terrorism, which will be added to by the time you declare the bandits, as uh, terrorists, uh, has increased and demands uh, necessary foreign intervention at the appropriate time when the call is raised by the country. But having said that, there is something that the president did with this budget, which is quite commendable, okay. and which will go a long way in helping with the issue of insecurity in the country. And that is the money that he has just approved in the budget, about 13, 13 billion, that is going to be used to fund community police around the country. It will create an impact. It means that we're heading somewhere. So if we're able to have a fund that will be used for community policing, we are gradually getting to state policing where these um, calls we have been making on federalism and the need for the states to have um, state police, just like you have in the United States and other countries, metropolitan police that you have in London and other rest of them for more diligent, more down to earth, more specific policing uh, that is not uh, hanging up there without trickling down to really uh, areas of insecurity needs. I think with this funding, the federal government has taken the right step and it will be productive. Interesting. Let me still take you on the issue Inviting of security. insecurity. Uh, let me still take you on the issue of security. Some analysts are questioning the constitutionality of such call, that call, uh, urging the president to declare bandits as terrorists in the country. They are saying uh, maybe such call should have been uh, through a legislative should have been through a legislative process and passed, and the president will be mandated instead of making such call. Can you take us through? Uh, the process. What process are you talking about? The process of declaring a particular uh, group of persons as terrorists. Is it is it proper in the, the sense law that has already defined who a terrorist? Okay. I started by saying that the law has defined who a terrorist is. And the question is the operation, mm. the characteristics of um, the uh, bandits at the moment. Does this fall under the scope of that definition? And the answer is yes. So ours is to make the law, but there are those who execute the law. So if we call the executive to implement what the law says, it's a right, it's a right call. They call in the right direction. The law is not you know, scars with the definition of um, of who a terrorist is. The question is, it is the duty of uh, the, the executives through the various security agencies to treat those people that have been defined by the law as terrorists, as terrorists. Mm. So uh, treating them outside the scope of that definition is not doing justice to the fight against terrorism interesting so uh, uh just before we move to some other national issues uh away from national issues rather to your activities at the house i want to take you back to the issue of security there was this question that was asked on the program that was sent in as a message uh on how much work was done by the lawmakers before approving the previous loan request of the executive especially from the angle of the house of representatives The loan has nothing to do with the security. If you say it, uh, this question has to do with security, I thought we have discussed on the loan. I said that on the loan, 
we have no problem with the borrowing of this government. We are still within the um, the benchmark or the space allowed uh, by international best practices in line with our GDP. We've not crossed the particular line as expected by best practices in the world because our GDP where it is and the amount of money we have borrowed we always there's always a comparative analysis to make sure we don't cross it we've not crossed that and uh, so our question uh, the question we have raised is not on whether or not we should borrow it's on the borrowing plan and how do we repay this loan what is it going to be used for and through the constitutional mandate of uh, 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 of the House of Rep members, we are going to use the instrument of oversight, of oversight functions to um, monitor the spending of this money that is being borrowed, and uh, who we'll raise, um, you know, dust if we find out that it's not being channeled to what the borrowing plan said. And um, as we said, the borrowing must stimulate the economy mm. that had been battered by COVID. COVID. Um, pandemic so so we, if, if 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 the borrowing plan accommodates that stimulation that is needed in the economy that will make us come up again not to borrow again then it is good because we cannot remain as we are without having the stimulants that will push us to the next level where we'll be now independent economically so every nation is borrowing at the moment we are not one of the highest people borrowing even in africa but the issue remains we must borrow for the right reason all right, it is still. And we have, you ask, when you ask how much work have we done, when you ask how much work we have done, the House created a committee, mm. uh, you know, to handle uh, issues bordering on the depth and the borrowing of this nation. And they, that committee always scrutinizes every borrowing plan before advising the House through a presentation of a report for us to do um, consideration of the report in our. Um, um, uh, uh, committee of the whole. So we do, we do, we carry out the process, you know, for before we say go ahead. Interesting. It is still Ben Kalu's mandate, and we've been speaking with the spokesperson of the House of Representatives, Honorable Benjamin Okezia Kalu. Of course, uh, reacting to the 2022 budget appropriation as presented by uh, Mr. President, that was last week, and all that legislative issues. We take a break now. When we return, we're going to look at. Uh, some of the uh, activities of uh, Representative Benjamin Okezekalu at the House of Representatives and also some of the ongoing projects, especially the latest concerning uh, concerning the Umpa Ecological Road Project. Of course, you know that has been flagged off and I'm sure you want to hear the latest concerning that. That will be uh, from the basis of our conversation and when we return after this break. Stay tuned. It's Benjamin Okezekalu representing the good people of Bende Federal Constituency. I am from Abia State. Arise. Honor, from the hallowed chambers, hey. his voice resonates crystal clear. You say you, you shared money recently and I represent the constituency and the, there are 360 of us and all of them are saying we are not feeling the impact. He is the unmistaking voice of Undi Bende and the image maker of the House of Representatives. Swept away houses and roads in communities like Mpa, Umimeni, Uzita and Bende. Mr. Speaker, I he's a committed, courageous, articulate and deeply impassioned lawmaker with the plight of his constituents. Joining me now on the political segment is Honorable Benjamin Kalu, who's the spokesman of the House of Representatives. Ben Kalu's ben mandate, mandate gives you first-hand information on the activities of the member representing the good people of Bende Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives. Honorable Benjamin Kalu, as well as his position on national issues. Ben Kalu's ben mandate, mandate as on flow 94.9 FM, Vision Africa 104.1 FM, and Real 99.1 FM every Tuesday by 10.30 a.m. Ben Kalu's ben mandate. mandate. Games of quality representation. Well, thank you very much for staying tuned. Still Ben Kalu's mandate, of course, it is uh, the program that bridges the gap between the parliament and the people. Weekly engagement of Representative Benjamin Kalu with the good people of Abia State, especially Ben, the federal constituency. Now, let's uh, move on. We've been speaking with Representative Benjamin Okeze Kalu on some legislative issues and, of course, the 2022 appropriation uh, 
uh, act, a bill rather, that was uh, presented by uh, Mr. President. Now, let's uh, move on away from national issues to your activities at the House. This concerns me because it is my constituency as a member of the Fourth Estate. Uh, the House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, of which you are the chairman in partnership with other development organizations, kicked off a two-day capacity building training for members of the press corps at the National Assembly. What does the committee intend to achieve with this? You were asking about the media? Yes, I, I, I'm asking about the media, though, of course, uh, which I'm a member of the Fourth Estate. I'm asking uh, the two-day capacity train, building training for the members of the press corps, uh, what the committee intends to achieve with this. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, I like the way you mentioned that this is your constituent. Adoption, my constituent, because I handle over 200 media platforms that um, includes both traditional media platform and also online media platforms. And all these two years of working with them as the chairman, House Committee on Media, um, I've discovered that call, especially the House of Representatives, uh, needed to uh, refine the job that they are doing for us as Nigerians. Media is the window through which the public sees the activities of the National Assembly. And if that window is not so clean up, they will not see clearly uh, the activities of the National Assembly. There will always be misconception, there will always be misinterpretation, there will be misrepresentation which will indirectly impact on the confidence level of the public and the activities of the house and you know once that is done it rubs on the understanding and the acceptance of our democracy knowing fully well that the legislative arm is the fulcrum of our democracy so it calls for us to periodically work on the capacity building of uh, the those who who captured these activities so i saw the gap there and uh, because of paucity of fund from the national assembly and their inability to run this periodic um capacity building workshop i had to approach a german organization known as bad and um agree with them on the need for them to fund the retraining of uh, our journalists. Luckily enough, I was able to push a presentation that was accepted by the German organization. And uh, uh, for two days, about 50 media houses selected for the first badge will be sitting and um, having capacity builders, facilitators from all walks of lives in the media space educate them on what they are doing wrong, how best to close up those gaps. The people are happy because my interest is also to motivate them because the various media agencies are not paying their workers well. That is the truth. The journalists in this country are not earning well. They're supposed to earn what they are earning at the moment. They're giving a lot and they get little back. So once in a while, it's good to remove them from the stress, keep them in a good hotel and educate them to re-motivate them for them to launch back into the space and give us um, a report that is not biased or commercialized, but a report that is based on integrity. So that is what we intend to achieve at the end of this section, that the journalists who are working with the house will come out more refined, more capable, and uh, uh, have a new perspective to nation building through journalism. Interesting. So let's talk about um, some projects that affect uh, 
your constituency now. Uh, let's bring it back home. Uh, the update on the Empire Ecological Roads uh, project, uh, of course, uh, the one that has been flagged off, uh, of course, and uh, the presence, you came back home for the flagging off of that uh, project. Uh, and uh, also with the representative from the uh, federal government and also uh, the contractor there promising, of course, the milestone that will be achieved uh, before the end of this year. Can you bring us up to speed and up, up to date on the uh, road project? All right, thank you, Michael. Um, I'm delighted to announce that um, we have not been talking the talk uh, just for the fancy of the beautiful words. We have been working the work because our people need the work to be done. And I can assure you that after the flag, just like we promised, we have moved into sides. Um, because of the rain, um, there was a little delay but the soil tests have been done and through the assistance of the community, the contractors have gotten a site where they will keep their machines and uh, it has been cleared. The machines have gone in to clear them. They are currently building their office, the construction office. And uh, I can assure you that materials will start arriving this week. So we are serious about that project. We are only concerned about the particular aspect of the project that went to where it was not supposed to go. Uh, and um, why those who actually need them, uh, the particular road uh, needed to be adjusted. Today, that was why I arrived late to this program. I was having an online meeting with the contractor, with the funding office, and with the main on ground to insist that what I represented to the federal government must be what um, will be executed. And anything short of that, uh, Benjamin Okize Kando, the representative of Ben, the federal constituency, will roar and will fight if they fail to do what we have agreed. So they have accepted. The adjustment I asked them to make that will include more people, just not just an individual. Okay. And we're not building road for any particular individual. We're building for the community to benefit. It's not about any single person. It's about the entire community. So I'm also asking them to include Umi Meni Mpa. It's um, not Mpa only. Umi Meni as this on the Mpa federal constituency that they will benefit from these. And I've also instructed that uh, if there are other benefits, that the community will benefit. Those who will fetch water, those who will bring stones and sand, those who will secure the property, and all those little, little things that they're supposed to be, they should not be denied because this kind of project comes once in a lifetime. So now it's here, uh, people must benefit from it. So the speed is going to increase now that the rain is going down. But now that you mentioned the project, let us use this opportunity to also mention other things that we are doing, uh, especially the solar. Yes, uh, I, I was going to energy. ask you on the solar uh, uh, mini grid project in Bender. Some persons are saying it has been abandoned for some time, uh, for some time now. Maybe you should bring us up to speed on that. The state of the project at, at this moment. Okay, yeah, uh, the people who raised that issue about being abandoned, um, they raised it because there was. Uh, a moment of slow speed on that project, which actually infuriated most of us. And it was based on the fact that for you to uh, remove a community from the national grid to the mini grid, you needed the consent of uh, the, the operators there, in this case, the AEDC, to give a particular documentation. It took a while for it to be given, but I'm happy to announce that it has finally been given I've been receiving calls from all over the world, uh, people from all over the world uh, saying what is happening to that project. I, w I wish to announce that the contractors have gone back to site mm. about um, three or four days ago. They are now working on the erosion that happened in the site. And due to their delay, they are clearing their site. And uh, the powerhouse where the 
instrument, the batteries and all the rest of them that will come with the construction. They are laying the foundation now to construct it. So everything is back to uh, where um, it used to be and the time we lost in that project. I am sure they are going to speed it up for us to gain time that they have promised. Okay. We are also assuring people in Ozitem and uh, Ally that um, the Ozitem water project that was slowed down was because uh, where they had um, started the job before, they lost water there, they had to go to an extension, which is double expenses for that particular project. So it, it, the place they built the tank, they need to now pipe it to the new place they found water. People should be patient. I uh, spoke to the contractor again this morning, and um, they have agreed with me with Anambra River Basin that the connection was going to be done almost immediately. I'm monitoring them. The same for Alai. I'm happy they have finally found water and capped it in Alai after so much difficulty there. And uh, in the no distance time, the tank will come up and um, the water of the discharging point will also be put in place. That is what is left. In these two sites, we have found water it's just to fill it a little infrastructure for people to have access to that water. And uh, we're also coming up with a new project that will put water, at least two boreholes, or at least one borehole in each of the political worlds. And um, if you have not gotten yet, please be patient. In no distant time, the award letters will be out and the contractors will be on site to get this job done. On roads as well, um, the Oberini Road, uh, none the rain is going down. We're going to start, even if it's a kilometer or two kilometer, we're tired of waiting. So we are going to start it um, almost immediately. The award letter is out and the funding is ready. So I'm going to be back home one of these days to push for this commencement of this job uh, immediately on that Oberini Road. And also, many people have accused me that uh, we are busy working in other parts of Bende, but Bende town, where I come from, the internal roads there, that the um, uh, erosion is trying to destroy places in Bende, what am I doing about it? And therefore, we are also commencing the uh, Amoko Ndokoruku Road uh, within a week or two now, and I'll be back to come to flag of that road. We're also looking at um, the Amogu Abomiri to the uh, school there, which we're trying to convert to Ampopuri um, University. Uh, and they put a precondition that the road must be done. So mm. we're going to do that Abomiri road to make sure that uh, the school that we're trying to bring on board there will, will, will come on alive. And talking about the school, um, we have also attracted uh, a special fund from the from the NCC okay. to put um, uh, an IT center in that particular school with satellites and all the rest of them and computers. As I speak to you, they have finished the renovation of some of the classrooms there and the place they choose for this um, um, computer center, uh, it will help the university when it comes on board. They are building on that as we speak now. And I'm sure in the next one month or two, they will be done. Still on the road, the road linking up one minute to Umori uh, to join the road um, that is already built there. It's also part of the um, internal two kilometer road that we'll do within Bende, Bende town. So uh, we should all be patient. We are working hard to make sure that these things are done. And Ozitem as well, we are looking at the road that is linking to Uzakwane. We have already pushed it far. And uh, very soon, by the grace of God, work will start there. And also, between Ozitem and Bende, we are bringing a substation again. And uh, it has been approved. The award letter is out. And it's a huge project uh, that is going to help us also in Bende Federal Constituency with power. Because if we have enough, if we have sufficient power supply, it will be a catalyst for our uh, development, especially economic development and economic activities there. Mm. Because we are very close to the state capital. So if we position or localize any establishment in these areas, it will feed the state, not just the federal constituency.
All right, thank you, Representative uh, Benjamin Okezekalu, for running us through uh, some of those projects. Let me also mention. Okay. Let me also. Let me also mention. Let me also mention that at Apano Methodist uh, Hospital at Apano, the um, borehole, there's no water in it at the moment, especially around that area. But we have gotten through the physical analysis that we can construct a borehole um, at the Methodist Hospital at Apano. And the, the contractor will move into site by today or by tomorrow to make sure we have the good water that we can reticulate to the school that is nearby there okay. and also to the community. So that is coming up. As we speak now, the contractor is on his way. So it will be happening soon. Fantastic. So uh, we're going to draw the lines open to get feedback, uh, of course, uh, from your constituents and also the good people of Abia State, especially as it concerns your representation at the House of Representatives. It is Ben Kalu's mandate on Flow 94.9 FM, Vision Africa 104.1 FM, Rail 99.1 FM, Family Love 99.9 FM, and ABN Online Radio and TV. We've been speaking with Representative Benjamin Okezie Kalu an astute lawyer and businessman par excellence of course he joins uh, virtually now the lines are very much open for you to be part of this program at this hour 0808-182-6949 or 0811-605-2949 also drop messages on 0906-510-8289 it's now you can also drop your message on flu fm's uh, facebook page we will take your message hello glad to have you join us what's your name good morning yes you're welcome my name is uh, mr frank i represent from Iberia West. mr frank where, where are you calling from you better what the invented hello yes go on please okay thank you this morning uh, thank you for i want to use Thank the uh, other person, the other Benjamin Charlie, the first part of the House of the House of Timber, for the all the positive points that the representative of the right side ever since the top two, the rest of the men. A lot of things have happened, have so much to say about the fake time in the rest of the House of Timber we have done a lot for us. Uh, Mr. Frank, if you can call back, your line is not that clear. We will appreciate it. He's calling from Iberia Ward B. If you can call back, we will gladly appreciate that. Uh, thank you. 0808 Glad to have you join us. What's your name? Hello. Good morning, Michael. You're welcome. And good morning, Honourable. Uh, this is Radio Senator College from Government College, Omaya. I, I am very glad when the Honourable mentioned that uh, they are going to side for the you know, season. Uh, my simple question is that, uh, yes, I came from Ozizen, actually. Uh, remember that from Uzza College, Ozizen, going to Ozizen, Abua, India Ozizen, you remember that there is a goalie erosion on that very road. And that road has spoiled for many years now. Honorable, what are you people doing on that very road from Usakoli to Ozizen? That's one. Two, for citing that uh, borehole in Ozizen, what part of Ozizen are you going to sign that borehole? Because we have eight community, uh, nine or eight communities in Ozizen. So what part of uh, Ozizen are you citing the borehole? Thank you, Honorable. You are doing well. All right, thank you, Radio Senator, for your contribution. Uh, glad to have you join us. Okay, keep your calls coming and your messages coming. Let's run through uh, some messages here and, uh, of course, uh, get more calls. Glad to have you join us. What's your name? Okay, w welcome back, Mr. Frank. Okay, thank you so much. I'm representing for Iberia Ward B. All right. Yes, in Cumbria, I just want to thank the Honorable Red for what you want to out. Kind of, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the
All right, if I can hear you clearly, you're thanking uh, Honorable for a uh, good representation, Mr. Frank. Then uh, Sonny from Uma here says, Honorable, how can we address the issues begging for answers? The gap between the leaders and the led is much. That's feeling agitation everywhere in the country. Uh, that's coming from Sonny uh, from Uma here. Yes, hello, uh, welcome. Good morning, Michael. You're welcome. I remember Mr. Prince will struggle for me. I know Monarch will go. All right. Mike, in, uh, in everything uh, Honorable said, I've been, I've been taking it very, very lightly. But this afternoon, I will not take all he said. Most importantly, what happened in the National Assembly on the, on the budget defense? He, he, is, he, is the, he is the spokesperson of the National the lower house. But let me, let, 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 let me, let me help him one, one a bit. I cannot accept that because... There's no way you can tell me that borrowing can make us out of research because there is no there is no concomitant effect between economic growth and economic development. There is no agreement between the, 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 the standard of living and the cost of living. How can he? I know that he's a lawyer. He can defend himself you know, logically, but economically, my, my brother, there is no way borrowing. Can relieve us from such a thing. Rather, it can make it can give us a transient, a transient relief, but because it is not a permanent relief. So let let them let them let let him let him go back to that, and ensure that they advise the president very very well in in the area of borrowing. When, when, when the economy is now recession, you are borrowing, and you are telling us that borrowing will help that recession. My brother, I don't believe that. That's my team. I hope you're blessing the studio. All right, Mr. Princeville, the uh, representative will respond to that. Good morning, Michael. Uh, good morning, Honorable Ben Kalu. Please, we need a lasting solution to every Monday uncertainty has been experienced here in Southeast, sir. As a young businessman, it's affecting me. I know many others are also affected. It, please, kindly work with other leaders from this region to find a lasting solution to this trend including negotiation that's coming from ifai chuku from ohafia all right ifai chuku uh, glad to have you join us uh, welcome uh, uh, welcome sir uh, i i thank honorable i am mr monde monde chuku alas monga from onenya honorable uh, last time you sent it uh yeah yeah see it uh to go and look for our rules the bridge the building has fallen apart Which era is that again, so that we can note that and if you will respond? All right. I'm on Monga. Yes. From on here. Ben here. All right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Let's take this so that uh, uh, Honorable can respond to your questions and also your opinions. Glad to have you join us. What's your name? Thank you, my humble speaker. My name is Mr. Tijoki. Uh, I'm, I'm from my, I'm from Elo, Mitsukwato. All right. I, I,
what they are doing. They are saying it that they are doing it. So let us believe in them, in them and support him. As far as I'm concerned, Ben Carlo is coming back to 2023, and after 2023, he's, he's taking over government of Africa. Because what we are working in government houses, because we don't have men that have vision, men that have focus. If somebody like Ben Carlo can handle uh, the big uh, finance, you see. Uh, all right, well, he needs to respond to the questions now. Th- thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, Uche Chuku. Uh, Uche Chuku Chikeze from Akolime says, uh, We the good people of Akolime and Umeyi. Umumeyi at large are always in support of you. Please, Honorable, my community has not gotten any share concerning uh, the project. We voted massively for APC also. Uh, Akolime Yaman Kalu Road needs urgent attention. That's coming from Uche Chuku. Now, you can respond to the questions and the contribution from your constituents, uh, uh, Honorable Ben Kalu. All right. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mike, and everyone who found time to tune in and also to ask various questions. Uh, this is what this program is all about, that we can, you know, you know, address uh, issues directly and uh, interact with our people directly. Uh, on the Ozitam borehole, it is already cited. It is already there. If you come into Ozitam, before you get to the Archie, it's on the right there. The signpost is there. And all what they are trying to do now is to link the discharging point to the tank, and then they will pump water. And this um, is powered by solar. It's one of the best. With, we're hoping that uh, we'll activate it before December. Then the gully erosion, uh, you mentioned that to see them. To be honest, um, the whole of uh, Ben, the federal constituency, we have uh, erosion problem. But you see, Limited resources from the federal government, they have to ration it. Um, you get a little this year, next year another person will get, and then you push for your own. I'm hoping that uh, God will help us. Like, like the one I found in Uzuakoli is very painful and um, uh, very close to people, current people, houses. We need to do something about that. I'm actually pushing to get a solution to that, among other uh, ecological problems of our pre- pre- place, especially. Also, the one at the law going to um, the Tumbuzo. Let me use this period to mention that people should be grateful to Dr. Joseph Carlo for that road. May I hear people write nonsense that um, uh, he built the road without the ecological need. The truth is, is that the approval given to him was for the road, not for ecological. Ecology takes a lot of hundreds of millions. So uh, people should appreciate the one he has done so far, the one we are doing, and uh, so that more will come, not castigating. So I want to make it clear that that road that fell, that ecological need on that particular road was not part of the contract, part of the work that Dr. Jekarlo got for that particular road. You know, we are doing part of it is done by him, part of it is also done by myself. So we need to appreciate the effort that we are making. Some people are putting this money in the pocket. We are putting our own money on the project. We should be encouraged and supported. Now, the gap between the leader and the led should be closed. That is what I'm trying to do with this program. You can see it's not easy for a, a, a House of Rep member to spend one hour taking questions from all the people from Abia State and all, all the country. If we can talk more, it will demystify this House of Rep. I don't even see that, you know, big man, House of Rep. There is nothing to be big man in that this, this position. It's a, it's, it's a service point for the people. So if they have access to you, you can answer their questions. You can take ideas from them and go back and improve on your work. Mm. So we are making an effort to make sure we bridge that gap. I agree with you. We need to bridge that gap. On the issue of borrowing and economic growth and economic development, my brother, very intelligent brother of mine, but you know what? Theory is different from practical. I can tell you I'm part of the government and any government in this, in this world borrows. Most government borrow. They borrow to stabilize. And then the issue is not about the borrowing. The issue is about the borrowing plan is it going to help to stimulate the economy? So that is why we are supporting the borrowing, but it should not be abused. Well, I'm sure your fear is about abusing it. If you can help us produce more, if you can help us create more job, why not? If not. The next issue that was mentioned, if I'm right, had to do with uh, um, a commendation from Iberi. Uh, I really appreciate Frank you, the gentleman Iberi. who called two times, and I, I really uh, uh, get encouraged by such call. Then there's a call from Moses on Oninyang. Yes, uh, Moses, that Oninyang from there to Oninyang Bridge to Omaha. Mm. I've already captured it. And uh, I was just I just got a call today 
that um, it has been approved for for it to be looked at. So from Onin and to Umaya will be looked at. But suffice that to say that I also interacted with the Minister of Works and Housing on the 12 billion Naira road that I charted between Umahia, Bende, and Ohafia. Uh, the company doing it, Heartland, started from Ohafia houses. Um, I've, I, gone to, I went to them, I said, no, they should balance it. Partly, uh, work should start from Ohafia and also from Umahia, so that uh, both axes will feel the impact of the construction going on at the same time. And we're discussing on how they are going to mobilize to begin to work from the Umahia axis. So let us be patient. They have already started, and I can assure you, uh, if they have marked the road. Even my friends, part of my friends is going to go down for the expansion of this road. Talk is going on on that. Another issue that was mentioned, if I'm correct, is the issue of sit at home. Um, to be honest, I agree with you that if you lose one day, man hour in a small business um, organization, it impacts uh, badly on your on your on your financials and uh, that is why the national caucus uh, from the southeast and the national assembly we have been talking on how to use a political solution All to right. solve this quagmire so that um, um our businesses will open as when due and then uh, make more money because we are traders and we are farmers we are trying to find solution but let me also advise uh let us make use of our saturdays especially those who have the small business enterprise use more of your Saturdays. Now that Monday is having issues, my advice is try and see if your opening hours on Saturday is extended. Okay. Uh, we are Christians, we don't really work on Sundays, but Saturday, let us make more use of it. All right. um, somebody said it's the first time we're having this direct contact we call from Umaya. I really appreciate your kind words. Yes, we're going to keep doing that because we don't have anything to hide. The more we talk, the more you understand us. Anu Chechuku from uh, Umun um, 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 yes, this morning I debated on the Akoli Mei Amman Kali Road. Um, the, that um, uh, as this of the federal constituents, I told them that we have Umi Mei and Ampa in that particular federal world. So the road that they are doing, that is a, a part of it that must come into that community. Don't be worried. We All are right. looking after you. That's why you have voted us to be your eyes and your ears. All right. Thank Re you. Representative you. Benjamin Okezekalu, we do appreciate you this week on Ben Kalu's Mandate. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. That, that's Thank you. I look forward to discussing with you by next week. I think we'll open the line more early. All right. Definitely. Thank you very much for joining us this week. The program returns next week. My name is Michael Oni. Oh,